Hello there. I know it's been a while. What's going on guys? I'm back with another video, but before this video starts, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Goodwall. Goodwall is a next generation community for students and professionals to create a meaningful connections, to build a huge network for jobs, as well as find scholarships and even showcase your achievement. I highly recommend the awards and scholarship section for all of my viewers, because a lot of my viewers, you guys are younger, you guys are in the high school range, and you guys are probably applying to college or are juniors and are looking at colleges. The award and scholarship section that Goodwall provides provides you scholarships that you can look at, you can find all the info about, and then after finding this info, you can decide whether you want to apply to the scholarship or not. And I highly recommend this because college is expensive and you can really use this to help pay for college. And as I mentioned earlier, you can post your achievements on Goodwall. So I want everyone watching this video to click the link below and post your achievement to Goodwall so I can see what you guys are doing. So please click the link in the description below and share your achievements and I'll make sure to comment on every achievement that I see. Just make sure to tag my name at RV Business. And I hope to see you guys on Goodwall. Do not miss out guys, thank you. So I've made a video on the SAT 2020 in the past and I talked about how it was gonna get much harder, but this video I really wanna give some tips on how to counteract that increase in difficulty for SAT 2020 for the math section. I want to give some key tips on how you can really prepare yourself and set yourself up to get a great score in the math section of the SAT next year. So the first tip is to master the linear equation field. And I'm talking about all the formulas that represent a linear model and any type of way that the SAT can give you a problem on linear equations, you should know how to answer it. So for example, the three main ways they may give you a linear equation problem that you have to know is first, they may ask you to solve a system of linear equations through adding, subtracting, and scaling the equations. You have to know how to do that. You're always guaranteed gonna see a question like that on the knowledge calc section. I've seen it every year, right? So what I notice is that the SAT gives my students that word problem, right? And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to read the word problem and decipher, okay, how can I make the slope for this equation? How can I make the y-intercept for this equation? And you have to construct that linear equation model, right? In order to solve the actual equation. And if you're unable to construct that linear equation model, there's almost 0% chance that you're getting the problem right, unless you get a lucky guess, right? So you have to know how to do that. My third sub-tip for the linear equation section is, yes, you do have to know how to construct a linear equation model given a word problem, but you also have to know how to solve a linear equation that's already given within a word problem or within the context of that problem. As in, a lot of the times they may give you a scenario, they may give you a linear equation within that scenario, and they're gonna tell you what, is, what does this represent? What does the slope represent in this uh, context? What does the y-intercept represent in this context? You have to know what they mean. All right? You must know how to interpret a linear equation in, in the context of the problem. That's a key thing that's always touched on the SAT. And the reason I really want you guys to master the linear section of the SAT on in a whole is because the linear equation section is probably like 40 to 50% of the entire SAT math test in terms of non-calc and calc. So if you're able to master the linear equation and everything about linear equations for the SAT, you're already guaranteeing yourself like a 600 on the math SAT. So please, please, please get that down packed. So my second tip for the math SAT section for 2020 is this may be a little reverse in a way you guys will understand what i mean but for the calculator section you have to get used to not using the calculator and at the same time you want to master the calculator whenever you do need it so let me explain this a little more the calculator section there's probably there's 36 questions there's 38 questions on the calculator section you only may need the calculator for about 18 to 20 maybe even less i'm kind of highballing this but based on what I remember, I rarely use a calculator every time I took the SAT calculator section, whether it be on practice or whether it be on the actual test. But at the same time, when I did have to use a calculator, I knew exactly what commands to put in, right? I knew exactly how to solve the problem using calculator. I didn't have to think twice. I didn't know. There was never an instance where I was like, oh shoot, how do you do this? How do you put this into L1, L2 and uh, map a linear equation model? I knew all of that because I was able to master the calculator and how to use it. And I had a TI-84, I recommend that for the SAT. Don't use any of the other ones. TI-84 is the way to go. But I was able to master the calculator and whenever I needed it, I could. I could use it easily and I could find the answer to the problem quite quickly. But at the same time, what I noticed is that a lot of students, they may use a calculator for so many problems on the calculator section, just because it says SAT calculator section, right? So they, they automatically think psychologically, hey, I have to be using a calculator a lot. That's not true. You do not have to use a calculator a lot. Matter of fact, you should be able to do a lot of the problems by hand. 
And yes, you can maybe use a calculator to solve those problems, but you will find it that you're you find it that you're much faster in terms of solving the actual problem if you write it by hand versus doing a calculator. But it takes more time solving it using a calculator than it would if you just solved it by hand. And you have to understand that. And that's why I really want you guys to get used to not using a calculator on the math SAT. But again, if you want to, you should be able to get whatever answer you want quite quickly, and you should not have to delay your problem solving speed at all using a calculator, okay? So you want to optimize speed and efficiency on the math, math SAT, and this is how you can do it. The third and final tip comes right below linear equation mastery in terms of importance, and that is to not make algebraic mistakes. And I'm talking about simple algebraic mistakes. You do not understand how many students I've seen where they'll be doing the question and they'll have everything right. They know uh, which approach to use for this problem. They know how to derive the answer, but they really end they mess up. And I'm just like, how'd you mess up? Like, you had everything right. And then I find out that they said nine times four was 32 instead of 36. And I'm like, oh my God, come on, man. Like you had the entire question right up until the very end. You made a simple algebraic error. And this cannot be the case, guys, because on the SAT, where they're giving you problems where you have to understand linear models, quadratic equations, uh, heart of algebra, passport advanced mathematics, you don't want to be making simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, division errors, okay? Because that's like your first in a track race. You're running, you're running, you're running, you're first, you're first, you're first. At the really end, you just trip and fall and you end up last, right? That's literally what happens to a lot of the students where they'll have everything right, that up until the very end, they make a simple error, right? They make a simple error, they trip, and boom, they got the problem wrong. A problem they would have got right, they would have got 10, 20 points for in terms of um, out of 800, they got wrong and they got zero points. And that cannot be the case, all right? That's that's a pet peeve of mine, and it should be a pet peeve of your guys, okay? Anytime you make an algebraic error, punish yourself in terms of like, do 20 push-ups, do 30 push-ups, or do some type of positive reinforcement. And that's what you guys have to do, because please do not make algebraic errors. Do not trip at the finish line, okay? So these are three tips from me for the math SAT section in 2020. Please master these tips. Please follow my advice. Because if you do, you're setting yourself up to get a very nice score, no matter how hard the SAT gets next year. So please, please, please listen. And don't let me down, guys. Don't yourself down. I hope you guys all get an amazing score. Happy holidays. Please like, share, subscribe. Peace.